Okay, maybe we start now. Welcome to the last talk of this semester. Our speaker today is Professor Su Xing Tai. Professor Tai is currently the head of the Department of Mathematics at the Hong Kong Baptist University. He received his PhD degree from the University of Jiwa Skila in Finland. His research interests include numerical methods for puzzle differential equations, optimization techniques, inverse problems, and image processing. He has done significant research work in his research areas and published many research works in top quality intellectual conferences and journals. He served as organizing and program committee members for a number of intellectual conferences and has been often invited for intellectual conferences. He is also the editor for many top journals, including Siam Journal on Imaging Science and Journals of Mathematical Imaging and Vision. The title of his talk today is The Sort Max Function, Pox Model, and Variational New Networks. If you have any questions, please click the raise hand button and I will unmute you uh, during the question and answer session so you can ask the question directly to Professor Tai. Let's welcome Professor Tai. Thank you very much, Raymond, for your introduction and thanks to all the panel members for inviting me to, to this uh, seminar and this workshop. So also thank many friends for coming to attend this, uh, this workshop or this seminar. So it's a really pleasure to meet so many of you through this uh, remote way, even we are far away from each other, but with the, uh, with the, the internet, we are getting closer very, yeah, very easily. So today I will talk about, uh, you see the soft mark function, the pulse mode on variational neural networks. Uh, and this is uh, based on a number of uh, recent uh, works I have done with uh, Professor Liu Jun from Beijing Normal University. And then the convex part has been uh, done with Professor So Sung Lo from Hanan University, plus uh, several other collaborators, uh, in, including my PhD student, Jeff Fan, also Professor Liu's students, uh, uh, Dr. Wang. Uh, and then I will try to go very, very slowly and try to explain the essential ideas. So to explain the ideas, so I will use uh, image segmentation and uh, use a deep neural convolution the neural net for image segmentation to explain the idea. Uh, however, the idea can be used for image segmentation can also be used for other uh, deep neural networks. So we just use the image segmentation as, uh, as one example. So for image segmentation is essentially I give an input image and then I want to segment this input image to a fixed number of objects like uh, this one is one, two, three. And then I, you see that I give the image, I also give the segmentation. So for example, I can give 1000 image and then with their given segmentation, and then you construct a neural network. And from this 1000th image, you can train your neural network. And then after the neural network has been trained, when you get a new image, you just go through the neural network, and then you will get your segmentation result. So this is one example to use deep neural networks for image segmentation. But the same idea, you can use it for other deep neural networks, not only for image segmentation. So here we just use image segmentation as one example to explain this one. So for many of us who have been working with image processing, we, we are very, you see, we, we know a lot of variational models. Uh, we also like to work with those variational models. You see, for image segmentation, so you have the active contour, you have a snake model, you have a Montfort shot, you have a transverse, you have a pause. You can list even more names with the variational models. So we know, you see that, how to use variational models to do image segmentation. So the idea, so I'm, I, I want to present today is, uh, you see, really we can integrate neural network with variational models. So which means that you can use variational models as a part of the neural networks. Instead of solving original variational models, 
So you can really use integrate those two approaches together, and then you have an advantage also integrated from both approaches. So I will try to explain in very clear way how do you integrate those two approaches. To explain the idea, so let me first uh, you see start with the softmax function. So the softmax function is that you give a vector which is a dimension i, you will get an output vector which is also dimension i. This put output vector called si is defined in such a way. And no matter what kind of xi you give, the output si is between zero and one. And this way is a transfer, you see that any vector into a probability vector. And very often the softmax is used as a classify, uh, classifier for, for neural networks. And especially you see for image segmentation. So in this is in the last layer, normally is a softmax. And this is essentially is given by this function given by this function. And then there's another, you see that um, uh, many of us, we know is another one which is called the post model. So the post model is essentially, you see that you give a domain and you want to partition into a number of dis disjoint domains. Uh, and then you see for a given function fi, this function fi mostly is called the probability function. And then you try to minimize omega i such that with a given f i's, the omega i should minimize this one. So this is called the post model. So post model, I think the original post model is for so for Icelandic, but now it is mostly we use a post model for image segmentation for classification, uh, and then you see that. Uh, so for the post model, essentially you see that also many people say this is uh, the, the Tom Vesey model because uh, the, the Tom Vesey and the post model really looks very similar. Uh, if you take the FI to be the, the, the image manners and the mean value constant square, and then this is essentially the Tom Vesey model. So, so but however you see that in data analysis, many people call such a model call, call it the post model. Uh, you see, how do you solve the post model? You see, you, see, you can solve the Tom Vesey model by level set, and then you can also solve the post model by level set. In addition to level set, you can also use a face field, use a, use a Modica, Motola, face field model to solve it. And then there's also one, another way to solve it. You just introduce, you see that uh, so many I indicator functions. So you have a U1, U2, UI, each one at each point X must be zero and one, but their sum equal to one. So that means you see that uh, each of these UI is an indicator function and their sum equal to one leaves there is no overlap, there is no vacuum. So once you introduce a such a kind of indicator functions and then you see we use a bold face as a vector function. This F also you see that is a vector function with all the FIs. And then you see that if you use the indicator function, and this is uh, the standard inner product of a vector or, 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 or L2 inner product of a vector for functions. And then you see that the post model, essentially you can transfer into such a, such a, such a one. So the TV of the indicator function will give you the lens or give the lens. So the post model can be solved by this kind of indicator functions. Uh, uh, the post model is equivalent to, to such a kind of an indicator indicator model. Uh, how do you numerically solve it? So, so essentially, I, I will try to. There are two ways to solve it. So, one way is through the mean cut mark flow. So, the post model is a mean cut problem. Uh, you can in, uh, you can explain it as a as a mean cut. And then we know the mean cut problem is equivalent to a mark flow problem. And then the mark flow problem, the GU problem, which is a convex. So, so essentially, the, the, so, so these, those are three problems are equivalent to each other. If you solve one problem and then you solve the, you solve, you see all of them and then you solve the post model. So the equivalence, uh, so can be, we have explained this one in a number of publications, and especially in a recent paper with Wick and Tony Chang and Tim Lin, we also give a, give a survey for this one. So in that next page, so I'm showing even more clearly, you see what are the three models. So essentially you see that here is a, just two phase. So in the, in the earlier pages, we, we, we see many, many phases. In the two phase case, you see that this is essentially the main card problem. And we call it binary problem in, in one of our publications. And this is uh, the, the max flow problem. 
a Mach flow problem. In fact, like Gibbert Strong in the in their early years, so he has been talking about the Mach flow problem, but a little bit different from here. But there is some similarity with his idea. So essentially, you see that uh, the the pulse model is uh, essentially this one. It is a main part. Uh, and then you see that uh, this uh, and the, the same problem you can also you see that formulate a max flow and the, the mean cut and max flow are equivalent. Uh, also, you see that uh, so here is a flow conservation. If, uh, if you use a Lagrangian to handle the flow conservation and then you see that you can transfer everything into the Lagrangian, this is a deal of the maximum flow, maximum flow problem. And this, in fact, exactly co uh, coincide with uh, with uh, the so-called the CEN. It's a Chang Esedoglu Nikolova model. So this is a called convex relaxation. But instead of interpreting this one as a convex relaxation, so we can say this is a mean cut, this is max flow, this is a dual max flow, and those are three problems are completely equivalent. If you solve one problem, you solve another problem. So the post model, you can try to solve it uh, through this kind of a mean cut max flow approaches and that's uh, that's reason i think you see that the boykov and this one is is uh, many people uh, want like to refer this one because this one is uh, is trying to use the discrete uh, max flow problem to solve you see image segmentation problem but here we are talking in the continuous uh, setting so this is one way to solve the post model in fact the post model is the mean cut problem so there's another way to solve the to solve this post model is that uh, so we add so here mostly this term called uh, entropy and also you see that you add such an entropy term also the constraints originally is we ask each ui to be zero or one but here you ask a ui to be between zero and one and this is the same and then if you if you solve this problem and then especially if you ask f goes to zero and then this model the solution uh, the, this model converts to the post model so when f goes to zero the solution of this problem originally between zero and one but when f goes to zero and then the ui in fact converges to a binary function so it should be either zero and one uh, and then you see that with Egil Bai and then with uh, Jing Yuan, we also have analysis to show you see that when F goes to zero, how close is the solution of this problem with the original problem. So, so, uh, I, I, so interestingly, we also observe, you see that in some recent papers by Rapto and Polk, and also I think they have several other papers, they have also used uh, such a model. Also, even some of them are in connection with uh, we, we, with the deep neural networks. So we, you see, we study about this one in this paper. So my feeling that most probably you see that this, uh, this model could, could be have already appeared in the literature even earlier than, than what we did, than what we did. So this is another way. So if you don't use a, you, see, you can use a level set, you can use a phase field, you can use a mean cut max flow. And this is another one. You can use this kind of a regular, uh, this kind of a smooth, smooth way to solve it and when this f goes to zero and the solution of this problem converts to the to the post model and, and especially you see that if you take f equal to one if you take lambda equal to zero and this is the very simple problem and then for this very simple problem you can easily you see that you can use some very simple calculations you can see that this problem the solution of these problems are exactly the soft marks so here you input f you minimize u by this problem and then the solution of this problem is, uh, is exactly the soft marks so this shows so this shows the smooth post model is just regularized soft marks so, so therefore you see that uh, in many of the neural networks, they use the softmax as the last layer as a classifier. So, so, so therefore you see that uh, that's equivalent. You take a lambda equal to zero, epsilon equal to one. Uh, and so the post model, you just regularize the soft marks. So this is very similar to another observation. So the, the Tom Vesey model or the piecewise right constant Manfusha model is just regular as it came in. If you take away the regularization from the Tom Vesey model and then it reduces to the came in. 
So here is also, you see that if you solve the pulse model through something of an entropy regular, entropy smoothing, and then if you take away the regularization, so essentially that reduces it to the soft marks. So the pulse model is just a regular soft marks. And from this very simple observation, uh, we can easily, easily, you see that adding variational models to, to, to the uh, deep neural networks. So the deep neural networks is essentially, you see that you give the input image, uh, you do the, the, the linear transformation plus activ uh, activation, linear transformation activation. So this is a construction of the deep neural network. Mostly you see that, uh, so here is uh, the last layer, here is all the feature vectors. And the last layer is a soft marks. So from the observation we have just given in the previous page, so the soft marks, if we use the soft marks is just unregularized the post model. So if you just stick with the regularization, the post model reduced to soft marks. So if we do not take it, and then you, essentially you can put any, you can put a variational models in the place for the soft marks. So, so therefore you see that many things we did with variational models. So you can just simply replace these soft marks with a variational model by using the smooth entropy term. And, and then you see that you can really put a variational model into as a last layer for, for the deep, uh, deep, deep neural network. And this is the central observation. So I want to say, uh, and you see that from what I explained up to now, it seems very clear. It's very, also very easy. So soft marks is unregular pause. If you replace the soft marks by pause, and then you are essentially, you see that uh, you, you can put you see, many of the well-known uh, variation models into the deep neural networks. And this is essentially, you see, what, uh, what we are trying to do. Uh, after you see that this idea looks very simple and very easy to understand, but once you do this one, and then you can, you can, you can put a variation model into deep neural networks into the last layer. So this is essentially what we did. Uh, and, then, and then you see that, uh, so here is an output feature vector. So this is from the last layer of the deeper neuron. And then we replace, we replace the soft marks and by this, uh, this post model, by this post model. So if you take lambda equal to zero, epsilon equal to one, so this is soft marks. But if I just say you see replace the soft marks by this one, and then you see that this is essentially you see, we put a variational models as the last layer for the deep neural networks. And here, just for you see, clarity, so I define what's a TV. So this is a TV is essentially for each component. And this is a ball, use a dual, dual variable. This is essentially L2 ball. This is L2 ball. So essentially, you see that we advocate to replace the soft marks by the regular soft marks. And once you do this one, and then you see all the variational models that we, we are familiar with, and, uh, and, uh, and then they are integrated into the, the, the deep neural networks. Uh, and then you see that, uh, so if you replace the soft marks by the regular soft marks, uh, and then how to solve it, so we can just use this kind of prime module. So essentially you see the TV, you can you see just introduce a, a dual variable cassette and this is divergent prime module. And for this prime module, you see, we can just uh, do a min mark to switch. And especially you see that if the, if the cosine is known and then you can see that U solution is just, uh, just the soft marks because it's a linear and this is a linear and this is a smooth entropy. So if a psi is known, so the U is, uh, is uh, just a soft marks. So therefore, and then we can use a very easy algorithm to solve this one. So essentially for the cassette variable, we just uh, do a gradient ascent and then a projection to the ball. And then you see that, uh, and then we, we solve the U by exact uh, minimization, this is soft marks. So this is a very simple algorithm. And this algorithm is look very simple, but it seems that there's a different ways to interpret it. Uh, and in fact, this algorithm was the first we proposed and use it in this paper when we, when we try to study this, uh, this smooth pulse model. Uh, and then the numerical result was quite good. 
And once, if you do this iteration, if you do iteration and 17 in a number, fixed number of iterations, and then you put this one as a last layer for the, for the disk deep neural network, and then you see that, uh, and then when you do the back propagation for the deep neural network, you need to calculate the gradient, the back gradient. And then this one, you see that you just use a chain rule and then use a fixed number of iteration for 17 that produce no problem when do the back pro backward propagation. So there's a simple formula, even with many of the, of the new software in PyTorch, uh, and then you even, you just need to tell this formula and they will calculate the backward propagation gradient calculation for you. So you, even you don't need to do anything. So this is essentially, you see that we, we put this one row, this primordial algorithm as a last layer, replace the soft marks, and then you see everything with the backward propagation, everything can be done very, very easily. So, so in this way, you see that we really put the, the, the variational models into the deep neural networks. So this is the, the first thing we did. Uh, and and this, uh, the, the, the first part was done uh, uh, jointly with Professor Liu Jun and my PhD student, Jia Fan. But later you see that Professor Liu, Liu Jun also did uh, quite a number of tests he found out, you see that the primordial algorithm was very good and uh, regularly the lens exactly. But however, you see that, uh, uh, and sometimes you need many iterations. So which means the last layer, you, you, you put a fixed number of iterations. And very often you see that we need to put a quite a large number of iterations. And then later he found out, you see, if you don't use the exact TV term of the regularization, instead, if you use MBUID or so-called threshold dynamics, so, and then you can replace the length of the boundary. So here is by total variation of the, uh, of the indicator functions. If you do not use a total variation, instead you see that here you have a U1, U2, you have a three regions and you have a three indicator functions. And you can just convert the indicator function by a Gaussian kernel and then multiply with the neighbors and you do all these kind of IJ combination. Uh, if you do this one, and then the integration you see is a proportional to the lens when this is sigma, this is a Gaussian, this is a Gaussian the standard deviation parameter. Uh, and, then, and then if, especially if you uh, divide by the square root of this rule and the, this rule is a, is a Gaussian, uh, Gaussian parameter, and this is, is, is a proportional to the lens, especially when root goes to zero. Uh, in numerical simulation, mostly we don't take the root so small, so big, we just take a proper number. Uh, and, and then this one, you see that uh, also approximate the lens. And this is very much related to MBO because you see that you, you convert the indicator function with the Gaussian kernel. This is equivalent to solve the heat conduction with a fixed time step. After that one, you do a threshold that's a multiply with the neighboring. Uh, and this is very much related to the MPO. Uh, and then we found out if you do not use a TV, but replace the lens term by this one. So this is essentially a quadratic with the indicator functions. And by this one, we found out, you see, you need much less number of uh, iterations compared with the primordial for the TV. And also it's uh, nearly performed nearly as well in many of the application we have tested. So this is, uh, you see that you replace the total variation by the threshold dynamics. Uh, and, then, and, then, and then you see that after we have done that one, so we found out, you see that you can really replace the soft marks by this more general, so this more general problem. And this regularization could be the TV or could be the, the, the uh, threshold dynamics. Uh, and also we found out, you see that here, we can also do a number of other things. So here C is just the simplex constraints. And uh, we can also add, you see other geometrical constraints or we can also you see, do like a volume of preservation we can add all those things uh, and, uh, and then replace the last layer of a soft marks by such a kind of a minimization problem, minimization problem. So he, this is, uh, so, so up to now, so I have explained it, how do you replace the soft marks by the well-known variational models we have been, we are very familiar with from, uh, from uh, for image processing. 
And from now on, you see that I will try to show several extra ideas. How can you add some more geometrical constraints into the last layer such that you can guarantee, you see your neural network with this, uh, with this uh, you see variational model attached to the last layer. You can, you can impose even some more geometrical, you see constraints on the on the object on the shape you you intend to segment so here yeah so here is uh, your first let, 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 let me go through you see that if you uh, do if you if you take this term as the as the threshold dynamics uh, using the mbu idea so how do you solve it so here you see that uh, we can take all u equal to here you can even add edge edge detector so u is uh, still the indicator function. Uh, and here you see that you can even convert the Gaussian with one minus u one minus u is all the you see if u is an indicator function for this region one minus u is an indicator function of the rest. So if you do this one, so this will uh, you see this will you see approximate length. Or, or of the of the boundary of the of the omega i of the omega i. So you see, u is a minimum unknown. So this is essentially a quadratic function. This is essentially a quadratic function, and the quadratic function we found out. You see that. Uh, so so this part is a convex, uh, and this this is a, this is a concave. This is a concave. So due to this special uh, structure, so, so even this convex function, so we can still, you see that, assume we use an iterative method to solve it. So even this convex, uh, this quadratic function, we can, we can do a Taylor expansion into the gradient, into gradient. So we can do a Taylor expansion. Uh, and then you see that, uh, and, the, and then this P1, you can have an exit formula. Uh, uh, if you replace a quadratic function by this linear function, which is the Taylor expansion at a given iteration, and then you see that uh, ut1 is known, pt1 is known, given here, uh, u matter is this linear, and here is also linear with this uh, simplex constraints, and then the u, you see, have a soft softmax like uh, exact solution, exact solution. Uh, uh, in fact, this algorithm is so simple. You, see, it, you, you, you do a fixed number of iterations. You first calculate uh, this PT1, so which is a Taylor expansion here. Uh, you update the solution. You get a new U, and then you do uh, you get another P, P, and you get a new. You just do a fixed number of iterations. So this will convert. This will convert to, 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 to the to the solution of the original problem. And moreover, you can prove. You see that this is a simple algorithm. Uh, you can guarantee you see the energy is monotonically decreasing and it's very very stable uh, and here is uh, you see that here is uh, 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 we i think this paper has been published uh, and then here is uh, you use the so so here we we just take, take a deep lab v3 as the so you use this one you're training on this data and then you see that this is, uh, we just replace the last soft marks by our new, you see that by, by fixed number of iteration of this algorithm. We use this one to replace the soft marks. And there is no problem with the calculation of the gradient uh, in the backward projection. So this is a result is you will replace the soft marks by our regularized post model. You can see there is a clearly regularization effect. You see here the small point disappear. So here you see also this is the outliers that disappear. Uh, and then here you see that even if you keep these small red points, but, but this red point disappear. You can see clearly there is a regular, there is a regularization effect. So here we just test on the original data set. If you uh, artificially add some noise into the, into the input images, and then that you can see the regular reason effect e even more clear. So here, this is what I'm going to show in these slides. So in these slides, uh, we, we have another data set uh, and then uh, we, we can use the well-known unit to solve it. We can we use well-known unit to solve it. Uh, here is a ground truth. Uh, and in this test, so we have used the TV as a regularization, but we add a little amount of noise to the input image when we do the training and when we do the testing. 
And once you add a little bit noise, you can see that. Uh, so here is the, the unit is already starting to have problems. So this one is still, uh, you see that it is still quite close to the, uh, I think it's quite okay. But you see that all the others, you are getting problems. You're getting problem. So this one is like many people like a CRF, you see CRF is essentially do a post-processing. So this is, we, we take this output and do the post-processing post, post minimizer is a TV, but close to the original one. So this is the post-processing. And this is, a, we use our proposed, uh, you see regular softmarks, and this is the result. You can see that for this case, the, the result is, 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 is much, much better than this one, also much better than this one. For this one, I think uh, this is, uh, is still much closer to the ground truth, but especially for this one, I think that you see that this is much better than the post-processing. So, so this is, we try to show the post-processing is not the best way. But also in many cases, uh, you see that, uh, so the post-processing can work, but, but also you see those cases shows that the post-processing is not good. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's better just replace the softmax by regular softmax, regular softmax. So in this way, you see that we explain it. How do you, you see that using this simple observation, so you can put variational models as part of the neural networks, neural networks. After that one, because you see the variational models, many of us, we like it very, very much. So the variational model, we can do a lot of things. So we found out that there's a few things we can really do it. So one thing you see that in many applications, so we either know, you see that our object is simply connected, or in many cases, we know you see that our object is a starship. Starship is definitely also simple connected. So starship means you see that you can put a center and then you can actually this center you call the C, we put it as a red point. You connect this center with a boundary and then the whole, whole segment should be inside your region. So this is the definition of the starship. And for many real applications as well, like many medical application, many other application, we know you see that all objects are starship or are starship. You see that, and then because you see that we can put the variational models as part of the neural networks, we, we, we found that there's a way how to integrate a starship into neural networks, which means that when you train your neural network, and then once your neural network is trained, we put a starship as a, you see, as a constraint on the output ship. So we guarantee you see the output must be a starship. Once the neural network is trained, when you get the new image, you go through your neural network and then you get your segmentation, you can guarantee your segmentation must be starship, must be starship. So how do you do it? So essentially you see that we use, uh, we use this idea, this idea, so we know, you see that, we know from those two papers and, and then there's something related to this idea. So essentially you see that if U is an indicator function, if you give the center of the object, so the object is a starship if and only if gradient you multiply this one is bigger than zero. So essentially you, see you have a normal vector and here is X minus C. The normal vector, the angle between the normal vector and this line, the angle must be less than 90 degrees. If it's bigger than 90 degrees, it will not be starship. If it's less than 90 degrees, you can prove you see that it will be starship. So surely you see that if you use the indicator function, the gradient is, uh, is uh, nearly everywhere zero. So this should be understood in the distribution sense, in the distribution sense. And then you see that uh, to, guarantee the, to guarantee the output is a starship. So mostly you see that in the beginning, what we did, you see that we also tried to learn the centers, but later we found out because uh, you see just, uh, just to, to, to make our test, to show the effect. So in our test, we assume you see, we manually give the centers for each of the object for all the images. And then you, if you want to, you see, if you want to, you see segment into your image into, you see, I, I objects. If you want some of them to be starship, and then you just, you see, ask this UI to belong to this PCI. CI is a center. So this U must satisfy this one, must satisfy this one. So how do you do it? So essentially you see that you can, you see, you can add a Lagrangian multiplier 
you can handle this one as a Lagrange multiplier. Again, you see that, uh, again, if you do this uh, DCA difference of a convex algorithm, so you replace a quadratic function by its uh, first order Taylor expansion. Uh, and then you see that here you, use, uh, you do the Lagrangian. So the Lagrangian use a projection gradient ascent. And then here U is essentially this problem is U will again will be, it's uh, the solution is known, it's a soft marks, a soft marks function, soft, soft marks. So essentially you see that, uh, so we replace the, re, we replace the, the soft marks by this, by this one. By this one, and uh, we solve this one with a fixed number of iteration between those two, between those two. You see, this is very simple. So the so, so this problem, the solution is the soft marks uh, related to is, is many of the other unknowns, and this is a, just a greedy ascent plus a projection. So if we just do a fixed number of iteration of those two steps and put it into the replace replace the, the soft marks layer by fixed number of iteration between those two. And then we will guarantee, you see that uh, such a kind of a neural network, when you give an image, when you go through it, and the object you get, at least for those UI, for those objects, they must be star shape. They must be star shape. So, so this, is, uh, this is very, very easy. And so here you see that, uh, so we want to test, to see this uh, idea really works or not. So, so for the test, essentially this, we assume this is a, a output of the feature vector. So feature vector here is only two classes. Here is only two classes. Uh, uh, and then you can do it for many, many classes. So if you do this one, if you do use the original soft marks, you will get it nearly the same. But if you put this one, you replace the soft marks by the regular soft marks with a stretch with dynamics, soft marks stretch with demand, and then you can see that you get a regularization effect. And then if we also put on the starship, on the starship, we need to put uh, manually put the center. So we put uh, this red point at the center, and we ask the output must be a starship. Certify stop safe constraint also minimize the, the, the post model in it. And then we found out that this is the output. You can see this is a starship with respect to this red point. But if we purposely you see, put the red point another place, and this is it, we run the algorithm with this work we get. So we can see that this is a solution of the post model. Uh, uh, and it is a starship with this red point. So this really shows you see the algorithm works. The algorithm really guarantees the starship. Uh, and the later you see that we really you see put this one also with a deep uh, deep lab version three. We replace the last softmax layer by our regular softmax with the starship constraints. And this is the, so, so this is the result. We train it on this skin cancer data set. This is a public data set. I just show one of them. So you can read the paper for, for more tests uh, and the more, more, more images. So this is uh, one of the image and this is a ground truth. Uh, if you just use the original deep lab uh, version three, you will get this one. Uh, if we add the regularization, so we get this one. So we can increase the regularization to eliminate the host, but if you use a too big regularization and then also you get some other problems. So, so here is uh, the, or here is, uh, you see another method I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't talk about is you can preserve the volume. And uh, here is uh, with a starship. <coughs> so here is a starship. So you can see that this will work very, very well, work very well. And uh, you can also guarantee you see it's a starship. Once a starship, you can eliminate all the holes in set, all the holes in set. So, so this is a still in a report. In the report, there are more numerical results you can, you can look at, you can look at. Uh, here is uh, some more test. So here is uh, some, uh, so this is, uh, uh, I can't remember how many, uh, how many images are used for the training, how many images are used for the testing. So, so you see that when we're training, uh, we, you see, we, we replace softmax by the regular softmax with Starship. When we do the testing, 
and this is also automatically you see as a layer so also automatic guarantee it is starship uh, here is a ground truth here is the result from deep labs three so here is a, you just add regularization but without not starship uh, here with a regularism with a starship so you can see that uh, you see that here is the original the deep lab uh, you can see you have a hose you have a small points because there is no regularization with a deep lab so if you add regularization, so you see that you eliminate the hole, you leave a small point. So this one, you see that we still have some uh, isolated points. So we still have isolated points. So you can increase the regularization to, to uh, eliminate those isolated points. But, but then you see sometimes you can also cause other problems. But if you use a starship, you see that you can guarantee you see all of them are starship. There's no isolated points. And it's also much more closer to the ground truth, to the ground truth. So the last thing I will talk uh, is about, you see that, uh, to how do you guarantee, you see that uh, your output from the neural network must be convex, must be convex. And this is uh, also based on, on uh, another work, you see, this is, uh, so this uh, in a recent paper with uh, Professor Lu and uh, Professor Wang Yang, this is ECCV last year. So here we use a variational, so we use a traditional variational model to guarantee you see that uh, your segmentation is convex. So in the current work, you see that we put this one into neural network and we can guarantee the neural network output is convex. So there are many ways you see that to, to describe, uh, you see a region is convex. So you can use a curvature, you can use the approach, you see that I think uh, approach, uh, use a graph cut, I don't list the, so uh, in this paper, we list the, the other approaches which have the used to guarantee convex. We also test on, on different ways to guarantee a region is convex. So the way we found out, you see this way is easy, and it works quite nicely. So how do you do it? So essentially you see that you have a circle. Uh, you put this circle into anywhere into your domain. So here we put the circle, the center is on the boundary. Uh, if the circle, the center is on the boundary, you calculate the area. So, you, so, so this area is uh, the circle inside the region. And then the, this area is, uh, is uh, the circle outside of the region. So if the region is a convex and the outside area must be bigger than the inside area. Uh, if this is a true for arbitrary ball and then you can guarantee you see that uh, this region must be convex in this part. So if you use indicator function, so if you use, uh, so if you use indicator function, if a U is an indicator function of this region, uh, and then you see that here is a circle. So this uh, GR is uh, is an indicator function for the for the GR is uh, it, this is a uh, you see that this is a G equal to this constant inside the circle equal to zero all outside. This is a GR is an indicator function for the for the circle multiply uh, multiplied by the divided by the area. And then you see that if u is a zero in the region, uh, if one in the region, zero, uh, uh, zero outside the region, uh, if you just convert to this GL with one matter two u, so this is essentially the area difference. This gives you the area difference. Uh, if this one is bigger than zero, you see that if the center is on the boundary, this is bigger than zero. If the center is outside, is surely this is also bigger than zero. But if the center is inside, uh, then we don't know. So at least if uh, this area difference is bigger than zero for every point outside of the region, and then we can prove, in fact, it's, a, it's a proved in this paper, you see this region must be convex. So how do you guarantee this is uh, outside the zero? You just multiply with one minus u. So essentially you see that if this constraint is bigger than zero, big or equal to zero everywhere, and uh, you can guarantee the region, which is a u is an indicator function must be convex. So this is a, this is a quadratic constraint. This is a quadratic constraint. So therefore you see that if we, if we still let epsilon go to zero and then the u, which is between zero and one will convert it to binary. Uh, if we also you see, ask these quadratic constraints and then we can guarantee you see that your output indicator function will be indicate a convex region, convex region. 
So here you see that uh, if we just have a two-phase case, so this is an intro pair, and this wall you see regular as the lens, regular as the lens. Uh, if we do this one, so we found out the steel, if you replace by first order linear uh, Taylor expansion, so, so the UT1, if you take away this, uh, if you take away these constraints and then UT1 will be, will be uh, 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 soft marks, you see, you, you have an exact, you have an explicit solution through a soft marks formula. And, and then you see that essentially you see that, so this is, uh, you see, if you take away the constraints, this is some, uh, the, uh, will be explicit formula in the soft marks form. And then we just need to do this projection. So this uh, projection, so this, uh, yeah, so this is explicit solution using in the soft marks, soft marks way. So it's nearly no computational cost. And this projection, if you, yeah, uh, uh, if you do it, you see altogether, there isn't uh, explicit solution, but later we found out if you do a pixel by pixel, uh, which means if you fix all the other pixel and you only project this on, on one pixel, and then we have an explicit formula. We have explicit formula. So essentially what we do, you see that we just go through all the pixels and then you see that uh, do a number of iterations and then you see mixed uh, and then you see that mixed uh, uh, and then you see do this one and then you do this project over each pixel but go through all the pixels several times and do a switch in between this one and then that will convert that will convert to to the to the regular softmax solution uh, if you do this one still there's no problem with the backward pro uh, uh, backward pro propagation greeting calculation greeting calculation uh, I, I also want to notice you see that uh, so the radius of the ball, so it's not only, if it's only, you see that the area difference is bigger than zero for one radius, it doesn't work. It must be bigger than zero for all, every radius. So in our computation, we just have to take a fixed numbers, take a fixed number. So you, do, you need to guarantee that that is bigger than zero, not only for one radius, but for number of radius. And this turns out numerically, you see that we nearly guarantee the discretized indicator function is indicating a convex a discrete region, discrete region. Uh, here is some result we show you, see we apply this one on some uh, medical data. So this is the eyeball uh, and then you see the eye, you have the center part and then you have the, you see the outer part, uh, one is called the carb, another called the disc and the rest is the background. And so here is a ground truth and here we use a deep lab three uh, and then here is that we only add regularization, but no convexity. So here we add both regularization convexity. You can see that we can guarantee you see that this is a testing result. We can guarantee you see that you input this image in, through the neural network. We can guarantee you see the output must be convex region, must be convex region. Uh, and this you see that uh, 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 and before we can integrate a variational model into the neural networks, this would be very difficult. So how do you guarantee that you have a construct a neural network? When I go through the new neural network, that my object must be convex, must be star-shaped. But once you see, we can put these uh, variational models as the last layer of the neural network, this turns out to be, to be quite easy. I think without this idea, it would be very difficult. Uh, even we see, we talk with uh, different people, and some people said that's nearly impossible. But with this uh, variational uh, model as a part of the neural network, this uh, turns out to be easy. So here is a uh, uh, test with uh, with another 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 image. You can see that everything here is convex, uh, and this one is also already a report in the XRCAP. And in the X archive, we have a more numerical result, and we have, uh, you see, also you see more details about uh, the, the advantages of, uh, of from the numerical numerical experiments. So we are continue. Yeah. So that was the uh, last slide. So, so so we are continue to be, because once you can integrate a variational model into the into the neural network, so there are many things we can do. So we are still continue in several directions. Uh, we, we want to put more sheep priors into the neural networks uh, uh, and uh, you see to get the neural network more stable. Uh, we are still working on several extensions uh, to, to, to utilize the advantage of the variational neural networks. 
uh, a, a more, you see all our new publication we put into the X archive when it is ready. Uh, you can also refer to my webpage and there's some more information about it. So I think uh, I will stop here and thank you all very much. Uh, if you have any question, so please feel free to ask. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, uh, 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 Professor Tai, uh, for this uh, very exciting talk. Uh, we have one question now by Yuri Korolev. Uh, Korol so, could you could you go ahead to ask the question? Yes, thank you so much uh, for the very interesting talk. Uh, from what you presented, it, uh, it seems that uh, um, we, we can understand the whole thing as. Uh, as a variational model. So the variation model does uh, most of the work. And then the neural network is just some uh, adaptive uh, pre-processing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you would with this kind of uh, interpretation. And if you do, uh, uh, what do you think would change if we use some other uh, not neural network based uh, adaptive pre-processing methods? How, how much of it is the neural network and how much is the uh, variational part? Thank you. I think your 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 comment is, is exactly so. Essentially, is now the neural network essentially two layers. So one layer is a, is, a, is the first part is the the linear activation. The last one is a, is a, is a very small. So if you replace the first part by others, I think the last part will still do the do the same thing. So we can still do everything in a in a similar way as a, as a what we are doing now. If that answers your question. Uh, yes, I was rather wondering uh, what the performance would be like. So if, if the good performance is due to uh, nice pre-processing of the neural network or uh, due to a nice convex model at the end. So I don't know if you, what kind of replacement are you are thinking about to replace the neural network by something else. And so what, what is uh, that something else you are thinking or what is that in your mind? Uh, some other feature extraction, uh, I don't know, some nonlinear spectral decomposition of the image or something else. Right. So I think you see that the deep neural networks are really due to the, the deep layers and due to the capability to extract the features. When that feature is combined with the, the, the variational model, it really performs very, very well. So if your new, you see, if your new way to extract features can work as well as uh, deep neural networks, I think they should perform, uh, you see, as well. Maybe if your features are even better, so I think the combined model will be also work even better than the deep neural networks. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have a question from uh, Professor Sampola. Uh, well, I don't know if uh, Anthony, uh, do you like to ask the question yourself or? Uh, if you if you want, do you? Hear yeah, yeah, please, please go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so hello, Yusheng. Yeah. Uh, nice talk, thank you. And I, I was wondering about your convexity criterion. It's more like, uh, is it? It's it looks like some curvature criterion. Is it two uh, D criterion? I guess. So in higher dimension, it would be more like the curvature, or it's also a convexity criterion in higher dimension. Thank you very much. That's a question I forgot to mention. You see that when you when you have a region, you see how do you guarantee your region is convex? So so, so I think many people use a curvature, uh, and here you see that we are essentially using the area difference. So which means that if you if you intersect a ball with the region and the outside area must be uh, bigger than. So this is uh, you see that there is a one way to compute the curvature is also based on this uh, area difference. So I think you see our, our uh, uh, characterization of a convex region is just a lower level curvature approximation. approximation. And there's yeah. another very good comment from you. You see that this one works for 2D, for 3D, and works for arbitrary D. 3D, if you just intersect the region with a sphere, if the volume outside the region is bigger than the inside, and then you can also guarantee that three region must be convex. Uh, in fact, we are also doing something testing in higher dimensions. But you see that if you really use a curvature, positive curvature, and that only works for 2D. Once you come 3D, you see that one curvature is not enough. You must use uh, at least two curvatures. 
So really, you see that this new way to describe the convexity is really, you see, dimension-free. It works for 2D, it works 3D, even works for high D. So that's one point I forgot to mention. Thank you very much to bring this up. OK. Uh, OK. So, so it's proved in your paper you mentioned. Yeah, that was approved in the ECCV paper. I think in another paper, we also tested on really 3D convex object, uh, uh, you see, representation. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Any other questions from the audience? So I think so, so your result kind of indicate that uh, the deep neural network has no uh, vectorization, right? So, so you have to add it uh, at the last step, basically. Am I correct? Uh, yeah, the, the original neural networks, you see, because it goes from, uh, you see, causal level to fine level, there is some up and down. So mm. there is a 13, there is a limited amount of regularization, but there is no very strong regularization. Mm -hmm. so, so once you add uh, this uh, very original model, re you replace the, the last one by very original model. So we yeah. have an explicit regularization. That's also very visible from the test. And also so far, I think many, many people when they use the neural networks, so they are not uh, as what we do with the variation model, we add a lot of image to the, to the input image. If you really add a lot of noise into the input, input image, I think many of the, you see the simple neural network with all explicit regularization will have a lot of problems. But if you add this regularization, we can see clearly, you see, we can overcome, especially when you add more and more noise into the input data. Okay, so we have another question from many, many co. So maybe you can go ahead to ask. Oh, uh, very nice talk. Uh, I, yeah, I have a, I like the, uh, the, uh, using the sphere because I can, I see that as like an integral measure, which of course is more robust to noise. Uh, but uh, as opposed to using, try to get, uh, estimate the derivative and things like that. However, uh, I have some concern about the, the, uh, how do you know what radius to test? Because you can might have a local very spiky uh, or, or highly very contour that, and uh, I, I, yeah, I just need, maybe I need to read the paper to see how you handle, to know what radius to use to test the, to do the inside outside test. Yeah, that's a very good question. So we also encounter that problem. If, uh, if, if it's a convex, but if you have uh, sharp corners or you see that if the skill is very high, and so, so you may have a problem. See, our test, so, so it, essentially theoretically, you must, uh, you must guarantee you see, for every radius, the area difference is, uh, is positive. But in numerically, so, so we test on different ways. So normally we first take the radius just like, uh, you see, like uh, two, two pixels and then six pixel, 12 pixel, and then 24 pixel. So we just take about four or five. And that one, you see that uh, from the test we have done, you see, related to your question. So if the problem is very difficult, and then you may not, you, may not, uh, you see, uh, if you use uh, very large circles, uh, uh, may not be, may also you need to use, you see, uh, radius is not one, you see, the, we, we just use like uh, in the test I'm presenting now, we just use uh, about four or five radius. If the boundary is really have uh, high skills at what you are seeing, and then we need to use more radius, and then that will make the iteration convert slower. And also it depends, you see that, uh, if all of them are larger scale, and then we can use a very few radius. But if somewhere is a larger scale, somewhere a small scale, uh, and then and then you may you may do, need to use a different radius uh, in different part of the of the boundary. So that's a thing we have observed, but, but we 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 didn't talk it too too much here. So I think your your question is that we have uh, observed this uh, in our test but we didn't draw up so much into detail to this part. I think uh, will be a problem if, uh, if some, uh, some of the boundary is uh, very oscillatory, even it's convex, but if it turns very quickly, but other part is very smooth. So that will affect, you see how many radius or which radius you choose. At the moment, we just pick randomly about four or five radius and impose that condition on those four or five radius. 
uh, I perhaps a some kind of multi-resolution, uh, some kind of multi-resolution decomposition, and with with a some kind of local statistics of the frequency content. I don't know. I'm just hand waving, but uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But very interesting problem. Very yeah. Thank you. I, I I'm gonna. I need to study your paper. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I, I feel you, you have some very good ideas. Probably I should contact you. Or if you can send me an email, maybe we can have some communication more. We'd love to. Connect, we'd love to uh, I'll, I'll send you an email. Thank you. Yeah, good talk. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, so are there any other questions? OK, so if not, then uh, we already went over time. So maybe we stop here. Thank you for saying again. So this is the last seminar of this semester. Our next seminar will start on January the 20th uh, next year, also on Wednesday at the same time. So on behalf of the organizers, I would like to wish everyone Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Bye-bye.